Hello, welcome to Books Cause Insomnia. Today, we're going to be going shopping at my local used bookstore here in Las Vegas called Dragon Castle Books. This store is huge. This is the middle part of the store when you first walk in. And then around the corner, there's a bunch of sci-fi books and horror novels and murder mystery books. And it just goes on and on. There's a whole manga section and comic book section. Sadly, two thirds of the bookshelf that had the Stephen King books on it was empty. So somebody really cleared house. But I did find this Green Mile book that I'm interested in possibly rereading. It looks to be in really good shape too. I was shocked to find first edition Christopher Pike books. And not only was there this one, there was an entire shelf of them. This book in particular, I remember reading when I was in high school and I absolutely loved this book. But then I also, found this book here, Remember Me, The Last Story. And I'm trying to remember if this is one of the ones I've read or not. So I'm going to have to put a little bit of research into this and figure out which ones I want to reread. Okay, I'm back in my car and here's my book bag that I brought with me. This is my, my little Dollar Tree book bag that I love. Here's a little sneak peek of the books that I got and I will do a little book haul when I get home but I'm so excited I'm excited to be home and show you what I got sorry my cat Marty is down here hi <laughs> he's just all about being in these videos and saying hello do you want to come say hi closer you say hi no. Okay. <laughs> the way he's like, <gasps> I guess not. I don't know what's up with him. He's usually not that shy, but occasionally he is. You saw in the video earlier that I was looking at Stephen King books and I did end up bringing home The Green Mile. This is a book that I read. I don't think I read it right when it came out. I want to say it was a couple years later, but it's probably arguably my favorite or one of my favorite Stephen King books. If you haven't read the movie or, or read the movie, <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie or read the book, I really recommend reading it. It's super good. I don't remember it being too scary. I mean, there were parts that really freaked me out, but it's super sad too. So if you're going to read it, Make sure you've got Kleenex because it is a tearjerker, but it's so good. His, hey, stop scratching. His character development is just impeccable in this book. Oh, okay, stop, stop. I'm going to assume that you probably have seen the movie or read the book already and that you probably already know what it's about. The original copyright was in 1996. But this particular edition came out in 2005. It originally came out in a series of books that were shorter stories. And this is the entire series in one book. Because of that, it's quite a hefty book. It is 536 pages long, but it's worth it. The next book that I got is Dean Kuntz Intensify, which I am not familiar with this book. I mentioned in a previous video, I think it was my first video on this page, that the scariest book I remember reading was The Fun House by Dean Kuntz. So he can definitely freak me out. He can definitely scare me. And I don't know if I'll ever be that scared again by a book. I just happened to read it. I was a teenager. My stepsister and I were home alone and my parents were on a cruise and we rented all these scary movies to watch and it was scary just in and of itself being in this like house of horrors as we watched all these scary movies. But I happened to read The Fun House 
while one of those weeks that we used to enjoy as teenagers was going on. So I don't know if I'll be that scared again. There's something especially scary about scary movies and scary books when you're a teenager, I think. The copyright is 1995. This particular edition is from the year 2000 and it's 436 pages long. I didn't even read the back. I just got this. And the reason I got this is one of my regular viewers, Shelly, said that she thought that I would enjoy it. And I put it on my TBR list. And so when I saw this, I had to grab it. Past midnight, China Shepherd, 26, gazes out a moonlit window, unable to sleep on her very first night in the Napa Valley home of her best friend's family. Instinct proves reliable. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, do you hear my cat in the background? He does this. He sings all the time. <laughs> A murderous sociopath, Edgler Foreman Vess, has entered the house, intent on killing everyone inside. A self-proclaimed homicidal adventurer, Vess lives only to satisfy all appetites as they arise, to immerse himself in sensation, to live without fear, remorse, or limits, to live with intensity. China is trapped in his deadly orbit. China is a survivor, toughened by a lifelong struggle for safety and self-respect. Now she will be tested as never before, at first, her sole aim is to get out alive, until, by chance, she learns the identity of Vess's next intended victim, a faraway innocent only she can save. Driven by a newly discovered thirst for meaning beyond mere self-preservation, China musters every inner resource she has to save an endangered girl. As moment by moment, the terrifying threat of Edgler Foreman Vess intensifies. And then it says, intensity chills the reader to the core and establishes Kuntz as a master. This sounds so good. And I, I've got this soft spot for, you know, in my heart, I've got nieces and nephews that are just so dear to my heart. I feel very protective over them. And when I read a book about someone protecting a child. I get really emotionally invested in it. <laughs> it's just this thing. I'm not a mom. The closest I'm going to come to it at this point in my life is being an aunt. But I love my nieces and nephews so much. And I am very invested in their safety and their well-being. And I, these kind of books really freak me out. So I think I'm probably going to really love it. It's probably going to give me insomnia. And that's okay. Have you read it? Let me know. Obviously, Shelly, you've read it, but let me know. I want to know if you've read any of these books, by the way, that I mentioned. And I do get kind of long-winded in these videos. And if you're not into to watching information about every book or the entire video, that's okay. I've got chapters down below for this video so that you can watch the parts that are interesting to you. Now, Part of why I went to this bookstore is I'm, I'm preparing for a video that I want to do that talks about the books that I loved in high school. So it's going to be books I read between 1990 and 1995. I graduated in 95. I was, I think I was in eighth, was it eighth grade or ninth grade in 1990? So I feel like that's a good chunk of time to tell you which books I really loved. But I don't really want to just tell you about the books I loved. I want to be able to reread some of them. But I wanted to try to find them in a used bookstore in a first edition or somewhat close to a first edition. I don't want to go buy them brand new, spend 20 bucks a book, and feel like there's there's just something so heartfelt about a used book, you know, with discolored pages and everything. So I <laughs> wanted to go look for them. And the rest of these books all have to do with that video 
And I'm not going to reread all of these, but I do intend on reading some of them. It's going to take me a while to go through these books, though. So if you're interested in this video, please be a little patient with me. It's going to take a little while to get there. So the first book from high school is Fear Street by R.L. Stein, And it's a super chiller book. It's um, super chiller number one. It's called Party Summer. And I was all about these books in high school. I just thought they were so good. This one was published in 1991. Uh, it looks like it might actually be a first edition. It says it's a first edition. That's what they wrote on the inside where they put the price. So I think it might actually be a first edition, which I'm kind of all about. So I'm really excited to have this in my collection. There are plenty of other books by R.L. Stein. There's quite a few different series that he wrote, but this was my favorite one, the Super Chiller series. This one's 215 pages long, and I'll read you the back. Why not? It says, don't listen to the stories they tell you about Fear Street. Wouldn't you rather explore it yourself and see if it's dark terror and unexplained mysteries are true? You're not afraid, are you? <laughs> okay, this particular book, this, so that's what the series is about. This particular book says, Carrie Taylor and her three friends look forward to a party summer. Working at the Howling Wolf Inn, an old hotel on a tiny island off Cape Cod. But to their dismay, the hotel is completely deserted and someone warns them to leave immediately. The mysterious owner, Simon Fear III, allows Carrie and her friends to stay, giving them the run of the hotel. The four teenagers are thrilled until they realize they've been put up in the haunted wing. Until Simon's weird and frightening brother appears. Until they hear a woman screaming. No party, please, no party. Until the walls and faucets begin to drip blood. When Simon Fear is murdered, Carrie and her horrified friends want out, but they can't escape. They're trapped on the island, and that's when the party begins. <laughs> it sounds cheesy, but it sounds so good, right? It's, I loved these. I really did growing up. They were just so good. So then I also got this one. This is Silent Night 2. Now, I didn't even notice that when I was in the store. There's must be a Silent Night 1. I just saw on the side it said two, and the other one says book number one. So I thought, okay, one, two, three, you know. But it says, uh, Jingle Bells, Santa Kills. I don't know what happens after that, but so that <laughs> is another one that might be fun. It might be kind of fun, maybe not to read this for that video, but maybe to read it um, for Christmas next year. So that might be kind of fun. My favorite mystery author. The one that started it all, I think, I'm pretty sure, was Christopher Pike. It was not R.L. Stein. To me, Christopher Pike was a little bit more exciting, actually. I don't know if I still feel that way if I reread these books, but in high school, for me, this was where it was at. I remember the only day off, because I was in a dance company, it was ballet, the only day that I had off was Sunday. And I used to sit down in our living room and read these from cover to cover all in one day on a Sunday. It used to be my favorite way to live my life on Sunday. It was just wonderful. The copyright is 1991 and it's 211 pages long. It's Die Softly. And this one came out in 1991 and it's 248 pages long. And one that I actually remembered loving which if I actually remember loving a book 30 years ago, it must be pretty good, is Weekend by Christopher Pike. And this one is a first edition. It's scholastic. I mean, that's how old school we're getting here. It's 230 pages. And this one, the copyright is 1986. So this might be one of, obviously one of the earlier books that he wrote before he really started getting popular, or maybe he was popular and I just didn't know it. 
there's only a couple books. There's one other book in here even mentioned that he wrote. So this might be his first or second book. I'm not sure. But I'll tell you what it's about since I loved it so much. This one says, The Weekend in Mexico sounded like a dream vacation. Four guys, five girls, and a gorgeous Oceanside mansion all to themselves. It should have been perfect. Except nothing was going the way they'd planned. There was the girl upstairs who was fighting for her life. The phone lines that went dead and the explosion in the garage that could have killed them all. But not even that prepared them for what happened next, because while they were getting some sun, someone else was getting revenge, and the terror wouldn't stop until the weekend was over. <laughs> I remember just loving this book, though. I don't know if I'll read it in one day like I did in high school, but... My eyes must have been really functioning quite well to be able to read 200 plus book pages in one day. I mean, I don't know how I did that. For me, a good day is 150 pages, maybe 200. So I guess I could do that. Anyway, and the last book that I got, <laughs> I can't believe I was able to read this book in high school. Honestly. I don't think my mom knew what this book was about. I don't, you know, she just, I wanted books and she would get them for me. And I, I don't think we would all go to the bookstore and pick out books. We were all readers in my family. And I don't think that she realized sometimes the books I was getting. This book was one of my favorite books in high school. I read it multiple times. And this book, I'm pretty sure is kind of like NC-17, maybe even rated X in some areas. <laughs> It's juicy and sizzling, <laughs> is how I would say it. So this is Chances by Jackie Collins, and this is the first book in the Lucky Santangelo series. Um, and this edition is from, oh, let's see, this edition is from 1991, and it's 816 pages long. Now, the copyright, though, I think is in the 80s. Let's see here. The copyright was 1975. Well, okay. I did not know that it was written that long ago. Huh. Jackie Collins's sizzling lucky saga all began with chances. The book that made Jackie Collins one of America's favorite authors sweeps you from the sophisticated playgrounds of Europe to the glittering gambling places of Las Vegas. It plunges you into the reckless, dangerous world of the Santangelo crime family. It introduces you to Gino Santangelo, the street kid who makes it all the way to the top. And then it brings you Lucky, his sensual, stunningly beautiful and passionate daughter, a woman who dares to win her father's empire for herself, a woman unafraid of taking chances. This book, <laughs> it is pretty scandalous and pretty raunchy in spots, but it is so good. It is so good. It's kind of got a little bit of everything in it, in my opinion. If you like crime stuff and gang stuff and somebody who's fighting to get to the top like it's kind of good it's kind of motivational <laughs> in a weird way i don't know that's just what i remember from high school though who knows if i would still think that now <laughs> so if you read any of these books please let me know down in the comments let me know what you thought i love hearing what other people enjoy reading do you like going to used bookstores and just kind of reliving the past? Or do you also enjoy trying to find the first series of something that you really loved when you were younger? Let me know. Am I, am I the only one that loves what I find to be collectible books? Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful day or night. I love you. Bye.